Okay, so I think we can get started. Um, let me just do a quick check. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Great. All right, perfect. So hello, every hello everyone and welcome to 365 Talent Portal's joint webinar with Microsoft on how to become a Microsoft Certified Trainer. My name is Nora Torfik and I am the Marketing Manager at 365 Talent Portal. So we've had an overwhelmingly positive response to this webinar with over 200 registrations. So we're very excited to be delivering this to you. On the webinar today, we have with us Elena Baeva. She is the CEO and founder of 365 Talent Portal. And I'll shortly hand over to Elena and she will briefly introduce what we do at 365 Talent Portal. We then have our expert guest Microsoft speakers, Keith and Nancy. Keith Overa, who is the Senior Product Marketing Manager, Business Applications at Microsoft. Nancy Tandy, who is Senior Business Planner, <clears throat> GTM Lead for Business Applications at Microsoft. Keith and Nancy will talk to you about the criteria, the step-by-step -step guide of the process, and where to go to get started with becoming a Microsoft Certified Trainer. You can ask your questions throughout in the chat box below at the bottom of your screen. And then towards the end, we will hold a Q&A session where Keith and Nancy will answer your questions. Finally, this webinar is being recorded and the recording as well as the presentation slides will be sent out tomorrow to everyone. Okay, so I'll hand over to Elena now. Wonderful, thank you so much, Nora. And um, welcome everyone. Um, this is a very exciting topic for us. And I can see from the people that joined the webinar, I recognize a number of the names and some of you are already MCTs and you probably have uh, practical questions around it. Others are experienced consultants who want to become our MCTs, but also there are some new people to the channel that we're trying to onboard and welcome to our community. So welcome everyone. Um, you will have opportunity at the end to ask questions. Um, so before we um, start with the MCT process and the criteria, I would just like to take um, a couple of minutes to remind you of what we do at 365 Talent Portal. Um, many of you are members, but you might not be fully aware of all the services uh, we deliver. So as you know, we specialize in Dynamics 365 and we provide recruitment and training services to consultants and partners in the market. Um, I am not going to talk about the recruitment side because today is all about training. But out of our community of 8,000 plus consultants around the world, 1,500 of you are also trainers, which is amazing because um, you clearly have a lot of skills and knowledge that um, you could leverage um, and becoming an MCT is a fantastic route for you. Um, we have actively worked with 54 trainers um, from our community um, and have delivered multiple courses for Microsoft, um, other learning partners and, and kind of for our own courses as well. Um, and 24 of you are already MCTs. And as you know, Microsoft are um, introducing the MCT uh, program even more vigorously this year. Um, so what we would like to do is to convert as many as possible um, consultants to, to join this program because um, it is ultimately very beneficial for you. Um, and uh, later I will tell you more about how we can help you at Physics 5 Talent Portal. But just to give you some overview of the type of courses and training we can deliver and maybe where you can help us deliver um, as trainers. So we cover the full specialization of Dynamics 365, so from customer engagement, FNO, Business Central, um, Commerce, as it used to, like, used to be called retail, HR, used to be called talent, power platform, uh, field service, etc. And we, we can deliver courses that are not just um, kind of uh, any particular specialization, they could cover the full variety of roles, so functional training, technical training, we could do specialization, for example, for solution architects if required. Um, we've also done um, train the trainer courses where we uh, we've worked with um, trainers who would like to 
um, familiarize themselves with the course so they can then take it on and, and deliver it um, within their own organizations. Uh, we can also del we deliver partner or end user training as well. Uh, and we've been working with Microsoft on a number of deliveries on, on their behalf, as well as exam writing and content creation. And, and we need trainers all the time. Um, and the way we deliver courses, um, it, you, in person, training was very popular. However, uh, virtual is becoming even more important nowadays um, in, in today's COVID um, era. So, so um, virtual skills are very important um, as a trainer to, to capture the audience, to engage with the audience, um, even though you're not in person in front of them. Um, and the type of courses we, we normally provide are the Microsoft official courses, which are called MOOCs, um, as well as boot camps. Um, sometimes we have partners and end users coming to us and saying, uh, we need customized courses that um, uh, outside of the official curriculum, uh, so we we able to to produce this type of content as well. And and sometimes we need trainers to help with content creation, not just delivery. So if you've got good writing skills, um, please let us know. So this is my brief introduction. Um, I would like to pass on over to Keith now um, and Nancy, and then after you hear from Microsoft, we'll come back and see how we can support you through through your journey. Keith? Thanks, Elena and Nora. Let me get my screen shared here. All right. Let me know if you can't see that. Um, good, good day, everyone. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you uh, might be around the world. Um, it's good to be with you today, and and you know, I hope that uh, as we're we're coming to you today, you're all healthy and, and safe given the, the current um, global environment and, and you know, best wishes to you and your families that it, it remains that way. Um, so we're here um, to talk about our MCT programs and give you a little more depth and information on that as, as Elena and Nora mentioned. So uh, by way of Keith, uh, uh, introduction, I'm Keith Ovra. Um, I am headquartered here or work out of the headquarters here in um, Redmond, Washington, and um, I'm part of the business applications business group and my role very specifically is to um, work to bring enablement and readiness to our communities um, <laughs> around the world. So why, you know, why are we, you know, why are we here today? Why are, why the emphasis on the MCT programs? Um, in the past, and many of you have, have, may have participated in this, in the past we've done a lot of training and a lot of events, and, you know, we haven't really had or held a baseline for um, who our trainers are, um, the background and the knowledge that they have, at least to set a, a minimum bar so that anybody joining the training knows and has confidence in the trainers that are bringing that to them. So as we've moved through FY20 and as we move into FY21, as Elena referenced, we're really ramping up um, building and bringing our trainers in as Microsoft certified trainers. Again, to bring confidence to people that are joining trainings, to make sure that we have a baseline of knowledge out there for folks that are delivering our training and delivering our Microsoft official curriculum or our mock training. So that's really where, where we're coming to you from today and, and why we're, um, we're bringing this information to you and, and hope that you join um, our community of MCTs if you haven't already. And, you know, we see, you know, current world situation aside, um, you know, we see a tremendous growth and we forecast a tremendous growth in the use of uh, business applications, workloads, and the demand for training supporting that. And so that's really where uh, we're energizing this initiative. So for those of you who aren't familiar, um, the not unlike our partner competencies or other competencies that we have at Microsoft, uh, MCT is, is the standard. Um, it's the bar for where we set our trainers. And it, it again, like I mentioned before, it allows 
everyone to understand the level of expertise that an individual has um, and in turn can impart to others. And so these are the folks that we look to It's as an expert, right? They're the, the MVP, so to speak, in, in training and, and knowledge um, um, communication, right? So, in, and they're not just instructors, right? In the past, you know, the traditional trainer um, is somebody that comes in, teaches the, the training, and, and that may be it. And the MCT community we see in large part as somebody who, who is a number of things. Not only are they, are they an instructor, but they may be a speaker at various events. They may be a consultant themselves. You know, we hear a lot from our partners that one critical piece that um, they feel makes a big difference in um, the impact of training is somebody's ability to also have acted as a, a consultant and been deep in our workloads in the past. Um, and also an evangelist, you know, somebody who is really in the product, um, knows it inside and out and, and serves a little bit as an evangelist um, for the product. So we've seen this shift um, in the market, not just with business applications, but I think across the board, and Nancy can speak to that in a bit, but, but just for Microsoft as a whole, um, somebody who's really invested in, um, in the training and the knowledge um, that they can again impart to others. So, you know, what does this community look like today? Um, these numbers are a little more than a month old, but it gives you an idea for, for what this community looks like. For the Microsoft Certified Trainers, there's, you know, over 1,200 globally. And if you look at the breakdown here, um, you know, a lot of those uh, come from a learning partner. Um, some may be freelance trainers. That makes up a majority of these folks. And you can see the breakdown in, in the certifications across the board. Um, we have 186, um, as of the time of this data poll, um, trainers certified in business applications. Now, the interesting thing, and, and, and um, as we entered this journey at the beginning of the year, um, we started um, a, around uh, six. And the pool has grown tremendously to 186 today. And uh, we're quite proud of the, um, the energy that this community has brought, the interest that they've brought in becoming an MCT and leading training and our training initiatives for our customers and our partners. So we've, we've grown that community quite significantly over the course of this fiscal year. And, um, and we're, we're looking to, to have you all join and uh, become part of that community as well. So these are folks around the world. Um, they're folks that hold at least one, perhaps more certifications uh, from Microsoft. So, you know, what does that mean? You know, becoming an MCT to Microsoft means that we know uh, that you have a certain level of experience and background and training, but what does that mean for you, right? It, that means you're becoming a part of a community um, that allows you certain benefits, um, not only accessing, you know, training and certification products, but perhaps more importantly, um, earning discounts in certain areas, um, invitations to various events and trainings that are exclusive to our MCT community, um, as well as ways to interact with each other and find connections, um, find opportunities. Um, there is a lot of, of these types of benefits that are available to you as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. And this is, an, an is not an exhaustive list. We have some resources that we will point you to later uh, to give you a little bit more insight into uh, what those benefits are. But um, it is part of, you are becoming part of a community and a part of a community that has um, various opportunities and, and benefits. So with regard to dynamics very specifically, um, this is the, not necessarily the, the path to become an MCT, but is, is a step in the path. You know, the first step in the path, and you'll see in a couple slides, is the earning of a certification. 
um, all those certifications being live at microsoft.com slash learn um, is where you can find those. And this is, um, as of today, the current sampling or the current list rather of certifications that are available from the fundamentals level there at the bottom of the slide through our associate level, which uh, for dynamics is the functional consultant uh, exams and certifications to the expert or the solution architect. Um, these are where you would start if you already hold one of these certifications. The journey is gonna be uh, a little easier for you to become an MCT. Um, if you haven't uh, earned a certification or um, you're, you have one and you're looking to maybe um, add another one into your, um, into your portfolio, uh, you know, a few of the ones that, you know, that I could recommend that that would be great to um, start with in the functional consultant level would be uh, field service, uh, customer service, um, or power apps or um, supply chain management are just a couple recommendations of where you could start. Um, but any of these um, are, are where we're looking to grow and an opportunity for you to jump in and grab uh, a certification. So we can come back to this later if you have any questions, but um, Nancy, I will uh, hand it over to you uh, for the next few slides. Great, thanks Keith. Um, as he, as they said, I'm, I'm Nancy Tandy. I'm a senior business planner at Microsoft, and basically I um, do the go-to market for business applications, and um, I think about training and certification all up for Dynamics and Power Platform. Um, and as Keith was mentioning, you know, our certifications are role-based, and um, some of you may be familiar with the structure, the exam structure of this, but we wanted to kind of just touch on this a little bit. Um, as you're thinking about uh, getting certified, uh, there's, a, there's a couple areas, um, as Keith mentioned, that he was making recommendations. Um, the path to get those certifications um, is pretty simple. Uh, we do have fundamentals if you're looking to get started. Those are not required. Those are optional. Um, if you're interested in a functional consultant certification, um, you have to start with the core MB200, which is our Microsoft Power Platform and Dynamics 365 core. So it's a two exam process. So you would take the MB200 and then, for example, if you were looking at the customer service, you would have to take the MB230 as well to become certified as that customer service functional consultant. And then again, in our expert level to the right, uh, which is our solution architect, and we're definitely looking for MCTs that are trained in solution architect. Uh, it's, a, it's a three exam process because you have to first become a functional consultant in either the developer or one of the other functional consultants. So that's two exams required. And then you would also have to take the MB600. And this is just for the model driven apps. If you wanna to go to the next slide, it's very similar for our finance and operations side. Uh, similar again, we have one uh, fundamentals that's optional. And then we have the core MB300 uh, that you would have to take to get one of the app certifications. Uh, again, then the expert area over here, MB700, it's a three exam process. All right, we'll go to the next slide. All right, let's talk about the enrollment requirements. Um, so when you're thinking about becoming an MCT, uh, the first thing is you have to achieve a role-based certification. So again, that's our associate or expert level that we just um, showed. Um, basically, enrollment is on an annual basis. Um, you have to teach at least one class in order to renew each year. And then there are program requirements that you complete on the application and you pay an annual fee. Um, so this one of the requirements, which would be the second step, um, you have to demonstrate your instructional skills. So currently, um, we have 17 approved instructional skills courses, and they range from things like Prep Masters uh, USA, Marcom Deli, Learning Tree, Train the Trainer. Um, there's a variety of them. There's a list on our website. Um, or you could qualify with um, having a one year of training. So for instance, if you're a 365 talent portal um, trainer and you've been training over a year, that, that qualification would, would help you and qualify you for that. 
Um, our third item is enrollment fee. So currently we have a $125 to $1,000 tiered pricing fee. Uh, but due to the economic impacts of COVID-19, uh, we are temporarily waiving this MCT program fee for both new and renewing MCTs until September 30th, 2020. So uh, this change would be reflected once you complete the application. So you wouldn't see it as a free offer as zero, but as you check out, then it would come up as zero. Um, again, this is just a temporary uh, price reduction kind of during this crisis. Uh, it applies to new as well as renewal. So if you've been thinking about joining for some time, but the price was a blocker, this is the time for you to join. And then, you know, we will be handing out this deck uh, after the event. So there are a bunch of the links to the enrollment guide, the tools, the program, um, and all of that information. All right, Keith, you go to the next slide. So we're gonna talk a little about resources to kind of get started. Um, so when you become an MCT, we have a lot of resources and benefits. Um, there are uh, software and services that are available. Um, so if you're, um, you know, in the modern workplace or Azure, you get actual free um, software for um, being able to learn and be kind of the first uh, person there. Uh, we're working on similar for Dynamics as well. So you'll get access to like Visual Studio, all of that so that you can train and prep and be ready um, as well. Um, we have an Azure Pass program um, that's used for training prep so that you can get in there and get on the hands-on labs, you know, practice, get ready for everything that you need to do. Um, as well as like free access to Microsoft Labs. Um, it supports the training readiness as well as um, a benefit for the classroom and for the students. Um, we have a, uh, a, what I would call a build of materials, um, which is our mock and our online courses. So you have access to both the uh, official Microsoft online course um, and the, the um, online course on demand and all of the prep materials for the students and everything that aligns to these new role-based uh, courses. So this is um, MCT prep purposes, prep purposes only um, and not necessarily used in the classroom, but we do provide you with all those materials. Um, we have a learning download center, which provides access to all the mock training resources, including the trainer prep guide and the PowerPoint deck that you use. So we provide you everything that you need um, to pre be prepared to get in, uh, trained and ready for your, your training and then all the materials for the actual training when you go out to train your students. Um, we also have an MCC, MCT store, which is a one-stop shop uh, for MCTs and MCT alums, um, where we have you know, shirts and welcome kits and anniversary awards and all kinds of things there. And then uh, we also provide discounts. Once you become an MCT, we provide discounts for you to continue with the certification. Um, right now, currently, um, a lot of the MCP exams are at 50%, but the select uh, role-based exams are around 75% or 80% off. Um, so if you're interested in, um, you know, if you have one certification and you want to expand to have multiple certifications, it's really easy to have, um, you know, get this discount and it makes it really uh, affordable and then you can become certified in other areas as well. And then practice exams, we do have offer a discount um, for our MCTs with Measure Up and we're working quickly to get all of our Dynamics practice exams up and running, um, hopefully within the next couple months. Um, then we also have books and eBooks as well um, for Microsoft Press Store and um, there's a code there that you would apply during checkout. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so this is just a great example um, of the mock training resources included um, in the download center. So as you can see, it's a pretty easy, simple, um, you know, process and you would just click on whichever uh, training that you're getting ready to do. And if you go to the next slide, This will show you um, kind of an example of the files available at our Learning Download Center. So we have the training handbook, which is everything you need to know on 
um, you know, training for the course. Uh, there's a trainer prep guide, which is the resources to keep you up to date um, with the Azure passes and the GitHub repo and, and all that information. And then finally, um, we're, we provide you with the PowerPoint files, which are available for each module and each uh, within the, you know, every course within the actual training. Next slide. And so again, if you think about the MCT, it's really um, a community driven program so that we have regional leads um, that kind of help mentor everyone along and that drive a lot of the community events. Um, they have a big yearly um, MCT uh, community um, event here in Redmond where Microsoft kind of meets with uh, the MCTs from around the world and uh, they all get together and um, discuss, uh, you know, what's working and what's not working and, and helpful information. Um, and then we have all of these different programs like the MCT Central, um, where you can stay up to date on the latest news and information. You can find jobs. Um, you can reach out to your regional lead. Um, again, we also um, do a lot of communication from Microsoft, from Microsoft as well as from your regional lead. But we, we have a quarterly town hall um, where we give you all the updated information. So you learn about new certifications and training and, and courses before the public does. So you'll have all that information from us um, ahead of time. Um, and again, um, we do also a monthly newsletter to all of the MCTs. Um, it's a great way to stay informed on, you know, the latest information. And again, we, you know, we blast as much information out in different vehicles. So if you prefer a newsletter, you prefer joining the town halls, um, you know, we hopefully repeat the information so that everyone gets it. Um, go to the next slide. And this is just a, a quick view of what the MCT, MC, MCT Central website looks like. Uh, it gives you kind of a, just a little overview of all the different benefits and tools and, and where you can go again to look for job opportunities um, as well. And then let's hit the next slide. There we go. Um, so when you think about um, MCT enrollment, um, there again, as the requirements that we've talked about, um, and if you're interested in becoming an MCT, um, you have to start with the enrollment, enrollment and renewal guide. Um, you basically um, accept the term and conditions, you fill out the information, you have to update your profile and within the information um, that you provide for MCT communications, um, you specify your employment status um, and you select your payment method again, which is going to be free right now. Um, and then um, you get through that information and uh, you'll have to verify your um, training program or, you know, if you've taught for a year and then the uh, application goes online and you get notified um, if you're accepted or not. Um, so after you complete all this application and, and payment, you'll watch for an MCT welcome email. And then you can access uh, all of the MCT content on your certification dashboard. So we provide a really nice certification dashboard um, that you can kind of find all that information. Go to the next slide. Uh, and again, uh, we do provide uh, MCT support. So if you need uh, help with your application, payment, benefits, or just general questions, we have a support forum that our engineering team and, and our MCT uh, program leads monitor. And so they'll, you can ask a question to it and they'll give you a response um, as well. And then we, we do have um, an overall team. So when you become an MCT, you know, we have a team so that you can reach out and to your regional lead and ask questions. And so there's a lot of ways where you can get information and knowledge. And the next slide, great. And finally, um, you know, the next steps really are about completing your certification, um, submitting your uh, application to MCT, um, and then really just kind of joining the community. Um, there are lots of great benefits. And as, um, as we mentioned before, you know, this is really a community driven program. Um, they work as an extension to Microsoft um, on top of 
uh, having some of the MCT events and training, we also uh, bring a large group of MCTs to uh, Ignite each year. Uh, we pay for their, um, their travel and they come and they do speaking sessions for us. They do a lot of the exam prep sessions. Um, they work the booth side by side with our teams. Um, to, you know, work with the customers and talk about the different training opportunities that there are. Uh, they work in the hands-on lab area at Ignite. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Um, they get a really great opportunity to kind of become part of that community um, and join. So. And Nancy, I would note that, um, you know, that's a, a fantastic example of how we fold MCTs into what we do day to day. Um, but I would note that, given the, the current global health crisis that Microsoft events are virtual uh, for the time being. So um, that's a, a good example, but this year um, Ignite will be virtual. So just so you all know, if you hadn't heard that. Yep. Sorry to interrupt you, Nancy. Nope, that's it. And I think that was our last slide. Yep. Wonderful. So if I can take over for a couple more slides and then we'll open the floor for questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So share screen. Okay. So now that you've heard from Microsoft um, about what their program is like, what resources you have for Microsoft um, and what support you have. I just want to add on top of that, what you'll get from 365 Talent Portal. So we have a um, few, few different ways of engaging with trainers. Um, so at the first step, when you are gathering your certification, um, if you sign up with 365 Talent Portal with the account, which I'm sharing on the screen, you can build a, a profile and access a lot of free resources and help with navigating through the Microsoft platforms. And this is all free. Um, it will point you to the right places, Microsoft Learn and other resources where you can gather all the information for you to go through the certification process. Um, if on top of that, you need assistance with instructor-led courses, um, if you work for a partner and if uh, you've got a number of your colleagues that need the same course, we can help schedule something for you and customize it. Or if you're an individual interested in particular instructor-led course, let us know on the link below which course you are particularly um, kind of yeah, going after and we will um, let you know of the schedule and the next scheduled course that can um, help you with, with someone taking you through all the materials you need to, to go through in order to pass the exam. Now, with the second step of the process is the training uh, validation. And as Nancy uh, shared with you, this is where you either point towards um, an institution that you've been training for, or if you have been training with us, because I can see on the list, many of you have been training for us for over a year. Um, please let me know, reach out, because you can put us as a company in the reference space for training, personal reference for 365 resource. Um, my name, this will notify me and I can verify. But again, this has to be only if you've delivered courses to us. Um, we can't make exceptions for anyone else. Now, uh, if, if, if you're a trainer and you have not delivered courses for us yet, but you would like to, you're more than welcome to get in touch. There are courses that do not require you to be an MCT and you can deliver those for us. Um, so once you build the experience uh, with us, then at that point, we can give you that um, attestation. Uh, you can get in touch with us through our training at 365talentportal.com. Um, and once you become an MCT, then the next um, question you probably will have is, okay, how do I start delivering? Where can I find courses? You clearly can use your network and connections and kind of Microsoft resources, but if you need another route through a learning partner, um, you're more than welcome to, to come and work with us. We have a variety of opportunities. Um, so again, you can reach um, us at uh, training at 365 Talent Portal. Um, you can find me or Nora on LinkedIn. Many of you have collaborated with Sandra, our training director as well. So 
any of us can, can help. So um, we want to grow our community. We want to help you become a Microsoft certified trainers. Um, I hope you found this uh, session very useful and I can see a lot of questions. Um, so I'll stop presenting and uh, I can look at the Q&A. So oh, for, yeah. I was going to say I'll jump in and take a couple of these really quick. I can see Go them. for it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I see one that says, is Business Central not included in the MCT program? Um, currently, we do not have an MCT cent uh, Business Central certification. So if you were looking to be only certified and enter the program that way, it's not available, but in the near future, it will be. So I'm not gonna go into details on that, but I will say that in the near, in the near future, you'll be able to have a Business Central certification. And then, um, Let's see. Do you have a sandbox environment for um, FNO? Yeah, so I'm actually, Keith might want to be better at this one. Um, I do believe when you utilize a learning partner that you get, um, you know, the software benefits from them. And then I believe that we're working on having uh, lab opportunities for each of the MCTs to be able to, um, you know, use to prep the classes and then use during the classroom um, as well. And I don't know, Keith, if you have any more information on that than I do. I was scrolling through the questions and I missed the one that got, that was read there. Um, was that just about access to the product? Yeah, it, it's, ask, it's asking about, do you have a sandbox environment for, got it. for FNO got it. that can be used yeah. during prep? Yeah, well, so a couple things. One is this is something that we know is, um, you know, an important ask and the need to have that sandbox and demo environment. It's something that we're actually working on as we speak. Um, so, you know, that's something that we're working on. It's not necessarily available yet. As part of a class, right, once you have set that up, you do have access to those environments and those slides, but in terms of in the in-between part um, is something that we're still working on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was a question on, uh, I work as an end user training covering a variety of D365 modules. Um, what is the best way for me to get the MCT as I do not have my own instance of finance? Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for you, but your first step would be to get certified um, in one of the um, role-based modules. Um, so we do have the free online training with Learn. Um, so if you want to go to Microsoft.com, WAC Learn, um, there are uh, you can start with the fundamentals. You can start with one of the functional consultants, and there is um, it's a self-paced digital online training that will help you prepare for. Uh, certification. So that's a great way to start. And am I correct, Nancy and Keith, that um, MS Learn now is introducing labs for certain courses and if particularly for mm -hmm. FNO, I heard that this is the case. So this can help you prepare for, for the exams. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a new thing. So if you have not um, looked into that, so Steve, that could be a um, a good way for you to to use the labs in preparation for the exams yeah yeah and for those of you who've taken some of the azure learning paths or things like that you're familiar with some of those labs um, they just haven't they're just making their way into the business applications uh, learning paths so you'll see more and more of those uh, as time goes by here yeah so I see another question. It says, my recent certification was MB300. What are the next, next suggested certifications? MB300 is actually not a certification. It's an exam, as I mentioned in the, the exam structure slide. It's the first step in getting a certification. And so um, the next one is you'd have to go and take a uh, exam for one of the app certifications. So on that side, the MB300, you have finance, you have supply chain manager, and then you have supply chain uh, manage, management manufacturing, um, as well as a developer one, and then the solution architect. So, um, go, Nancy. I, I perfect. Be this yeah. Slide. So, if you yeah, look at the MB300, which is the core operations, that is just an exam. It's not a certification. You have to take a second exam, which would be the M3 or the MB310, the 320 
the 330 or the 500. Um, any one of those um, gets you a certification. So once you've taken MB300, you don't have to take it again and applies across all four of those exams or those certifications, sorry. Um, and so if you're, you know, um, hard to recommend, I don't know what your area of expertise is, but if you're a finance accounting person, then you definitely want to go into the MB310 direction. That's excellent. Thank you. So the next question is on tools and resources, learning and download center. Would an MCT be allowed to use Microsoft's official course materials, so I presume mocks, for the classroom? And if so, um, I'm assuming there will be a charge for this. So, uh, yeah, I'll let you answer that. <laughs> um, I believe so. So it depends on, you know, if you become attached to a learning partner, um, then I believe the learning partner pays for you to download the, the resources. If you're a freelance, um, yes, I believe there's a slight charge for, um, you know, downloading the use of the, the mock material. Uh, but that's exactly what it is, is you're paying for um, access to the mock material and then being able to teach that. And am I correct that you're currently running a promotion of um, mocks at zero uh, value until September, I believe? That is correct. Yeah. So just as a special exception, um, yeah, but normally there is a charge. Yeah, yeah. So the next question I see is which path should I take for a beginner to be Dynamics customer service qualified? So the path you would take would be, um, you would have to take the, depending on if you knew anything about dynamics at all. Um, if you don't, you could take the fundamentals as a really good overview. Uh, but if you're somewhat familiar with dynamics, then I would suggest going to the MB200 exam, which is again, the core. And then you would flow into the MB, and I think it's 210, off, 220. Uh, yeah, 230, sorry. <laughs> 230 uh, is the Dynamics 365 customer service exam. So you'll have to take two exams to become certified as a customer service functional consultant. But again, you can take uh, fundamentals if you're brand new. Um, Power Platform Fundamentals is the other one. Um, they're kind of a good combination to take both, uh, but they're not required if you're familiar with, with the product at all. Yeah, and, and I would add, you know, a lot of these to underscore that, you know, a lot of these exams for the associate level are designed um, such that you, you need to learn the material, but you also need a little bit of experience with the product. So starting with fundamentals, if you don't have any dynamics experience would be the place to start. So I'm seeing a question about which of the instructional skills courses requires least time to achieve it. Um, I actually don't have the answer to that question, but I would assume if you've been teaching um, with 365 Talent Portal, then you know if you've got a year, as we've mentioned, then you're already um, have met that requirement, so you don't have to take one of the instructional skills courses. Um, Nancy, we've also got a bunch of other questions in the uh, in the Q and A section. I was um, just looking at those. Yeah, can yeah. I fire up a few of those for you? Sure. Great. So just the first one there is um, I was an MCT from 2009 until 2019, but my MCT expired in March 2019. What would be the easiest way to gain the credentials again? Um, I think there's a, a alumni program. If you go to the website, um, basically it's a shorter path. Um, I think you just have to be in good standing with Microsoft um, and basically, um, you know, pay the fee, which there's no fee now. So um, I think it's a pretty easy loop. If you've been an MC alumni, um, you can get back into the program. I think you just have to prove that you've been training again or that you've been in good standing. So it's pretty simple. Uh, again, um, there, there are some links to these websites where you can kind of dig into some of this information a little more. Okay, good. Um, and then uh, the second question there is, uh, I got my MCD credentials in 2013, but now when I renew, it has been changed to MCT alumni. What's the difference between MCT and MCT alumni? 
Um, so alumni usually means that you're not actively training. Um, and so if, if you are actively training and your status got changed to MCT alumni, you need to go to the support forum and have that change back. Uh, and, Cause I think, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, sorry to interrupt you, Nancy. I was just going to say, I'm looking at the, um, become a Microsoft certified trainer site here. And there's actually a section that's called moving from MCT alumni to MCT. And essentially the steps are, you know, meeting the current program requirements and then applying, you just reapply. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I would definitely check your status. If you, if you don't think that you're supposed to be an alumni, um, it may be because you weren't active, but you can go in and, and talk to this in the support forum. Mm. Good. Uh, and then the next one is, um, how would the earlier 716 slash 717 exams fit in? Yeah, so um, there's a lot of the earlier uh, legacy exams like the MCSD and CDSAs um, that we were planning on retiring in July. We have now extended that until um, January of 2021. So those currently still do apply. Um, but, you know, again, think about those are going away. So you, you definitely want to get in and get your role-based uh, certifications because that's um, our future. That's where we're moving to. And so, you know, anywhere where you can take the fundamentals or these associate and expert role-based, um, those are the, that's the direction that you want to go. I would also add that the, you know, there's a, a link between the current certifications, the Microsoft official curriculum and the online on demand digital training, right? There's a thread of commonality across that content. So if you're going to ultimately teach some of that Microsoft official curriculum, it would make sense for you to have the current role based certification uh, under your belt. Um, and then another one uh, is asking, uh, I am currently an MCSE and an MCSA and willing to become an MCP, but I don't have one year of instruction experience, therefore I'm stuck. So could you guide them on how to become an MCT? Yeah, so that's where they have to demonstrate instructional skills. Um, you know, verifying it through one of those instructional skills courses, those certification programs, so they can do that. Or as, um, as Elena had mentioned, if you've been training and with uh, 365 Talent Portal, then she will uh, give a reference for you. So you can actually have uh, someone reference the fact that you've done some instructional training if not. If you haven't done any training, then I would look at the list of, um, instructional skills certification places, like I mentioned before, that you can um, work through those. Mm. Okay, and uh, so this next one, Elena, this, maybe uh, this one is a good one for you. So it says, uh, so you have to prove training experience in order to even apply for the MCT, but pretty much any company offering training requires you to have the MCT before they'll let you do any training. So um, it's yes and no, so not really. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Certain courses, if they are Microsoft official um, courses, you would have to be an MCT. Um, but there are lots of other courses you can deliver that do not require you to be an MCT. Um, and especially if they're customized courses for, for partners or end users, um, again, you can reach out to us, if you've got the skills, the background. Um, if you're interested in delivering courses, we, we can talk to you about it. And again, remember, you know, what Nancy referenced is, right, there's two paths to, to have that experience. One is to, to have a reference that says you've been a trainer in the past and, and um, you know, you have that capability. That's, that's number one. To this point, if you haven't had that experience in the past and you, this is something you would like to do, to Nancy's point, there's some instructional skills courses that you can complete and showing completion of that course qualifies for that uh, requirement. So if you don't have instructional experience, you take an instructional skills course or certification that that qualifies and that enables you to become an MCT before you've uh, had that opportunity perhaps to instruct in a classroom. And then Elena gave another good example, right? You don't necessarily need to have taught 
the mock content. It's just you've had that experience instructing in general. So, you know, I'm sure again, Elena and, and 365 Talent Portal can help guide you on that to get that experience. Yeah. And, uh, oh, sorry, go on. I was going to say, so I'm reading one. It says, is an MCT allowed to create their own Dynamics 365 Power Platform courses and or create custom Dynamics 365 Power Platform courses for an organization in addition to using Microsoft Official Courseware? So we require that you use the Microsoft Official Courseware um, and we ask that you don't um, alter or change it in any way. Um, what we do like for you to do is to bring in your real world experience um, within the guidelines of the mic curr mock curriculum. So as you're teaching these classes, um, it's great for you to say, hey, um, during this uh, implementation uh, with this customer called X, um, we did X, Y, and Z. So uh, we'd love for you to bring in kind of that real world experience, um, but we do not like for you to alter our uh, mock curriculum. And there's, some, and there's some reason for that, right? Our product marketing and engineering teams have a regular rhythm and cadence of content updates so that they're bringing the latest product um, features and functionality into that training. And so that is always going to be the best source of the latest uh, from Microsoft. And, you know, admittedly, sometimes there's a little bit of a lag between when something uh, goes generally available and when it gets worked into the training and the certification. But that mock is always going to be the latest um, official information. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so another question there is, um, if you are a freelance consultant and would like to have access to the mocks, um, how can I gain access? Um, you have to become an MCT to gain access to the mocks. Yeah, a freelancer can do that once, you know, there are, there are different ways to be an MCT. Again, you can be attached to a learning partner. Um, or you can be a freelancer and there are, um, I believe, uh, companies out there that facilitate kind of hiring of jobs as well. Um, but once you become an MCT, then you do have access to the mock. And, uh, oh, sorry, go on. No, I was just, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just, I was just scrolling through these questions myself and I don't think we answered this one, but someone asked, can an earlier achieved certification be used in becoming an MCT? And the answer is absolutely. If, if the certification you have is, is on this list and, and um, pertains to the MCT program, um, those can absolutely be used. So if you already hold a certification and you're not an MCT, then you've got, I think in some instances, maybe the hardest part out of the way. Now you just need to show those steps two and three, you know, one being, showing that instructional experience. And if you've got that, then it's taking care of the fee as we've noticed for this short um, period, the, those fees are waived. And so this is the best time for you to take advantage of that if you, if you, if you wanna take that step of turning the existing certification you hold into an MCT. And talking of the fees, there were a number of questions. So is it only an MCT renewal that is free or becoming an MCT is also free? So both for now, but also if you paid for your fee um, from February onwards, you can request a refund actually. So, um, so that yeah, the link you can go. Yeah. Yep, that is correct. Yeah. And uh, so another question here, um, wh which path can I take? I have five years experience with Dynamics Nav as a functional consultant. Um, so I think the path depends on uh, your area of expertise. Um, you know, again, we have two sides of this product. There's the kind of the, what we call the customer engagement side, and then there's the finance and operations side. So uh, if you're um, a finance and operations side and you have five years experience, um, depending on which area, you, again, we have the finance, supply chain management, uh, supply chain management, manufacturing developer as well. So it, you know, it just depends on um, the path, you know, where the experience lies and which product uh, for Dynamics. Agreed. And, and like I said earlier, you know, one of the things that we hear time and again is it, from folks that have taken training is 
you know, your, your experience and your prior knowledge really comes through and is apparent as people are in your classes. And so if you've been a functional consultant and you've been out in the field, I would do the one that's closest to your knowledge base and start there. Um, Nancy, I wanted to address one in here because I don't think we have yet. And I think it's important, again, given kind of the current uh, global situation. And this, this one is, um, can you do the exams online or do I, you need to go to an exam center to do those? Nancy, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, so currently most of the uh, uh, Pearson View exam centers are closed um, due to COVID, but they are on offering online proctoring. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy uh, to get in and make an appointment and, and get your uh, certification taken care of. Um, in fact, um, one of the people on my team this week just got his fundamentals certification. And so he said it was really pretty easy. He registered a couple days in advance and uh, was able to go on and do it from home. And, uh, and he passed his certification. So um, they are during this time frame. if you uh, sign up for something and then you can't make it, um, they're waiving a lot of the fees. So normally you, there would be a fee if you canceled at the last second, but I believe all of the fees and, and rescheduling of it is, is there's no fee at all. So, um, but yeah, you can definitely do the online proctoring. And I haven't, uh, oh, sorry, Elena, I, I, I've only done an exam in a test center before, so I can't speak directly to the virtual option, but uh, do know that if you take advantage of that, you do have to have a camera um, that the proctor can access um, and see you while you're taking that exam. So do know you need that set up um, ahead of time. And I think that there's a list of you know requirements to take it virtually, but um, I would also say probably may need to be a little patient during this time, just given the, the uh, volume of people that have switched to virtual. Yeah, and I was going to say it works really smoothly. We've had a number of trainers over the last six, 12 months going through online proctoring exam. Mm -hmm. It's super convenient to do it at your own time from home. Um, as Keith said, yeah, you need to have a camera. They'll take control over your computer as well to make sure you're not checking answers online and, check, um, and using other resources. But um, it's very smooth and everyone said that they actually really enjoy the experience. I think there's a, cup, a couple more. Do you have to be a developer to take the MB600 exam? No, you just have to have the knowledge. So uh, there's no requirement to be a developer just for the developer exam, just like there's no requirement to be a solution architect or a functional consultant to do those. Again, it's testing your knowledge. And so if you, if you gain that knowledge, then you definitely can take the exam. There's no other requirements. I've got another question here that's asking, is there any place where they can take practice exams because uh, they are currently preparing for their MB300? Yes, so Measure Up is our uh, vendor that does all of our practice exams. So currently, I think we have um, six of the exams at Measure Up and we're trying to quickly uh, get as many out the door as we can. So. I believe there's another three or four that will happen by the end of June. And then by August, September, we should be completely caught up and there, there will be a practice exam for every certification that we have. And uh, so another here, would the MCT be an advantage when applying for Microsoft Dynamics partnership? So competent, so being a Dynamics competency partner or is, you know, in the competency requirements are, are posted uh, publicly. So there are, depending upon where you want to be and, and what level of competency you're applying for, there are some requirements to have certified individuals, um, but not specifically MCTs as of today. So um, I would say that earn the certifications for sure. Um, and, you know, given this time of um, the waived registration fees, um, if you're an instructor, I don't think it, becoming an MCT could hurt. But again, for competencies at the moment, take a look at the current guidance posted online. Um, but those at the moment are uh, just looking at certifications. So if we can just do another few more questions and then uh, we'll finish off. So over here, we've got um, 
I have many years experience, uh, many years training experience as an independent functional consultant, but for various organizations, not sure how to prove that other than collectively getting lots of clients to ratify. Does this qualify for the experience or will I need to take a certification? Uh, I would say that if you can get a reference supporting that you have had at least one year of instructional experience, I think that qualifies. Okay. Um, if, you, if you have particularly worked with one organization and one exactly. delivering yeah. training for a year, you could put them as a reference and they can verify that. And mechanically, the way that the reference works when you fill out the application is you put in the individual and their, their mail address, and that person receives mail saying that, that, you're, that you are requesting that they verify your training experience. They go in, they check a box, they verify that uh, you have, in fact, had that experience, and then that becomes your um, verification. So it's relatively... Um, it's relatively quick and painless for those that you're asking for that reference from. Um, I would just give them a heads up that it's coming, but, um, but yeah, I think that that would, would qualify. Okay, and uh, let's do the final question. And then what we can do is uh, I'll leave my email at the end. And then if there are any more questions, you guys can send them in and then we'll collate them all and then perhaps send it back out to you. Um, so the last one is there's no mention of Dynamics 365 Commerce in the list of exams. Mm. Is that covered under FNO? Yeah, so um, currently, and I've seen a couple of these come through with human resources and commerce and business central, um, we do not have certifications for those currently. The, the list that we gave you is what is there, but we're working towards having additional certifications. Um, you know, we, we every few months uh, we announce a new certification, so just stay tuned and we're working through um, getting all of those taken care of. Okay, brilliant. All right. Well, thank you very, very much to Keith and Nancy for being our expert guest speakers. And thank you, Elena. And of course, to everyone uh, for joining this webinar on how to become a Microsoft certified trainer. We hope that we've helped to shed some lights on the benefits, opportunities, both personal and professional of becoming an MCT um, and how and where to get started, as well as your next steps once you've been certified. If you have any additional questions following this uh, webinar, you can send me an email. I've just popped it in the chat box there. It's nora.torfig at 365talentportal.com. Um, let's have a look, let me just double check. And yes, we will send the recording. So there are lots of questions yeah. about it, so. Yes, so, um, yeah, so we'll, we will send the recording. Um, if, you don't, if you can't grab my email there, you'll get it when I send you the email uh, tomorrow with the recording and the slides. Um, you can also visit our website at 365talentportal.com to find out more about what we do, sign up for our newsletter or register to our portal. Um, thanks again, everyone, and goodbye. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.